Welcome to The Hair Loss Show, where Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram Jayaprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to The Hair Loss Show. Russell, good to see you again. Thank you, Vikram. Good to have you, everybody, here. And uh, if you, we could ask a quick favor before we get started. Uh, we, we've been looking at the statistics. About 11% of you that watch the channel have subscribed, uh, which leaves a significant proportion uh, that are really enjoying the content that are yet to subscribe. So if we can just get that uh, needle moved a little bit further, we'd be ever so grateful. So please hit that subscribe button, and that helps uh, boost the ranking of the channel. So today's topic, everybody, is uh, going to be about uh, growth hormone, which is an, um, an area of medicine that Vikram specializes in with anti-aging medicine. And so there is a lot of chat about the use of growth hormone in treating hair loss. So I'm going to pass over to you. Fair enough. Okay. Through that. Good. I think, you know, we're seeing a lot of that. And certainly nowadays, um, with the concept of anti-aging medicine, with the, you know, with the advances in regenerative medicine, there's a lot of study that's been going to, well, how can we optimize the biochemical pathways that exist in, in, the, in the system? And yes, we know about uh, you know, ha uh, hair loss, male androgenic alopecia, male pattern hair loss, and the hormonal pathways. But people are going, well, what are, what are the other things that we can do? And we know that certainly in men after the age of 30, 35, the level of, levels of a variety of number of different hormones and important molecules go down. And that's just a function of aging. Chronological, chronological aging. aging. And testosterone is one of them. Right, mm -hmm. so testosterone is not just about uh, libido or you know or strength. It's really good for the for the brain. It's really good for the heart and 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 protects us in a variety of different things. And the other one is growth hormone, right? And growth hormone is is fantastically important, right? It is really important for the cellular function of all the cells. And certainly, if there is right now an anti aging sort of you know, super molecule, probably growth hormone is that because we know that with the passage of time, growth hormone levels uh, go down. And with that, a variety of disease processes are allowed to, you know, a, a more sort of optimally able to, to flourish. And one of those things people are talking about is the, um, is male pattern hair loss. So we can't necessarily explain it in the same vein that we're able to explain, uh, you know, with our current model with testosterone and, and dihydrotestosterone. But we know that certainly in terms of hair shaft diameter, that the presence of growth hormone does improve that, it does improve the health of the hair. It also improves blood flow. Uh, to the area and therefore in terms of g delivering nutrients delivering oxygen to the to the scalp is going to be better for the for the hair uh, shaft so this is well. where we where, where we uh, need to the differentiate between the effect of growth hormone on hair generally yes versus its ability to interfere in a specific process like male pattern balding right. so when uh, as we age, for example, our eyebrows um, uh, often thin, yep. and uh, growth hormone has been shown um, in these patients to assist, as you say, yep. the uh, the shaft diameter and, and, and give people stronger um, um, eyebrows, for example. So we know that it has general hair health principles. Yes, um, but that doesn't necessarily mean it translates into any benefit. No, in, and I think what in, hair, in this type of in hair specific loss. yes, that's right, because people are looking at people who are on growth hormone that don't necessarily have androgenic alopecia and but what they're commenting on is my hair also feels healthier mm. it feels thicker it's able the, the ability is, is to grow longer as well yeah. the problem is i don't think it's the panacea i mean certainly there are other issues with uh, growth hormone and it's you know there's um a lot of problems in terms of prescribing and what the other effects are and it's uh, it's use and overuse is probably the other the other concern but uh, what I wanted to sort of highlight is that it certainly is not the panacea because there are other pathways that can trip us up a little bit because growth hormone in itself, okay, you can inject growth hormone or you can inject another analog of, of growth hormone uh, as well. But growth hormone, what it will do is it will turn in, it will change into something called IGF-1. And we know that IGF-1 does convert into 
our friend DHT. So in an individual, and this again has not been fully studied, but you could sort of hypothesize, in an individual that is experiencing already the genetic that's associated with having male pattern hair loss, if you give them growth hormone, there's a potential that they that it may increase their hair aggravate, loss. Aggravate that type of hair yes. loss. So paradoxical. Paradoxical. You may notice that some hairs thicken up, but it may sort of uh, expedite the the degree of hair loss that that individual uh, may experience. So I think certainly if you are going down the road of measuring your growth hormone levels and you want to optimize it and correct it, I think okay as long as it's been done properly and under the proper supervision. Managed properly. Yeah, I think there's there's you know there's merit in that, uh, but. It's certainly not something I would do off your own back and try and get sort of black market growth hormone to try and boost your hair because I think there are potentials across the board where it can cause problems. But if you're trying to do it to improve your hair, you may come unstuck a little bit. Yes, it has the, it has the potential to do harm. And this is a pretty serious intervention. Yes, think absolutely. Yeah, and not something that we've we t we've talked about before. We've not talked about it before primarily because. We don't get involved in it at all. I, I've never ever prescribed yeah, growth hormone. No, exactly. uh, so, but I've had people come to me on growth hormone yes. asking uh, about the effects, and that's the issue. You know uh, that um, it's not a panacea, and that if it, it would be better, in my, in my opinion, to for growth hormone to be managed in a situation where there's clinical evidence yes. that it needs boosting. Yes, not in the hope that they can turn into some super person yeah. because they can you know do this anti-aging and you know give me some testosterone give me some growth hormone i'm going to do everything to fight anti-aging as much as i am and we'll have all of these other wonderful effects and i think i mean that's it's an, it is an important uh topic to discuss because you know we talk about you know being in that anti-aging uh, sort of space but also right now we're seeing a lot of other people come into it and you know uh, talking about various treatment you know, gene therapies and other things that they're doing to try and uh, elongate or certainly ex uh, extend life expectancy and other aspects, skin and hair health is, fall under, uh, under yes. that sort of category. So I think there's going to be more discussion about it and certainly there needs to be more research in, on, the, on the topic, but I think this is more of a, a warning going, right, it's, yeah. not the, it's yeah. certainly not the panacea. It's, to not, it's not, a, not a path that I would recommend to patients. Absolutely. Anyway, I hope that answers that question. Uh, thanks again for watching, and we'll see you on the next episode. Thanks, everyone.